You know, we've gotten a lot of crazy characters and concepts in the world of Gundam, but we've never really had much of a bounty hunter feel. Until now, I've always wanted to see what a bounty hunter Gundam would actually look like. Hey guys, it's 101R Smith back at it again this week with a review, the review of the Master Grade Strike Noir Gundam. Now before we even touch a runner or open up some plastic, we need to celebrate a little bit of a milestone here, as this kit is something special for this channel. This kit is my very first ever sponsor review of a Gundam model kit. Yes, this is my very first ever sponsored review, and this review wouldn't even be possible without the good folks at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is a store up in Canada that sells model kits not only to Canada, but to North America as well. They offer $10 flat rate shipping, and if you're one of those people like me who like to buy in bulk, any order worth $300 or more is given free shipping. Please go check them out. They are the ones that gave me this kit and as well, I have to give a shout out to the Gunplot Network for being able to handle this sponsorship given to me. Please, if you can, and if you love Gunpla, please go check out Canadian Gundam as well as Gundam Planet for all details and information Gundam related. Now, now that we got that settled, back to this beauty. This is the Shrike Noir Gundam. This comes from an OVA series called Gundam Seed Stargazer, a three episode OVA series that came out in 2006 right at the tail end of all the seed hype. Basically, it's a story that's trying to talk about the Stargazer and the technological advances that happened between Seed and Seed Destiny. This kit is based off of the original Strike Gundam that came out in 2003, and that was the first ever Master Grade Seed kit that we ever got. So this came out in 2007 as well, and basically I feel that maybe Bandai is hopefully trying to, with this kit, improve a lot of the problems that the original strike had and maybe you might have hints at some of what they were trying to do with the strike remaster so we don't know anything unless we open up the box so let's see what we have here Opening up the box, and I'm going to say that you're going to get a fair mishmash of a lot of different things. I would say that this kit is 50% Strike and 50% Strike Noir. The inner frame and some of the weaponry here is reused from the Strike, while a lot more of the outer frame and the newer weapons are exclusively built for the Strike Noir. Otherwise, I would say that it's a fairly simple Master Grade compared to what's in the box. A lot of it is a mix of polystyrene and ABS, and a definitely you're going to be getting a lot of black and gray. So you, if you're a painter, you might want to paint it up to differentiate weapons from inner frame. Otherwise, I would say that this is your fairly standard early to mid 2000s master grade. Nothing flashy, but it's really about the kit and what it comes out of. All built up, and now we have the Master Grade Strike Noir Gundam. I have to say that with this Master Grade, it has one thing going for it strongly. It's looks. It's very dark, angular, menacing, and dare I even say it, striking. Probably the only problem that you're going to have with the build is numworks. Since this is a relative of the original Strike, it's going to adopt a lot of its bad nubs. And since this is a dark compared to your traditional Gundam colors, you're going to have to be spending a lot of time cleaning up nubs. But since there aren't a lot of panel lining, that's where your focus is going to be. And if you pay enough attention for it, it's going to be worth it because this thing is a beauty with a sight to behold. Now, while it looks good, we need to check out some of that articulation to see if a 10-year-old kid can still hold up. 
like always, we're going to start with the head. The head can go up and down and 360. However, the back part and the collar is going to sometimes trap you and make it difficult. The arms, thanks to it being on a screw, can go about that far. However, sometimes if you want to go 360, the back part of the Noir Striker is going to stop you. You're going to get decent ab crunches front to back and side to side. The front skirts can open up while the side skirts are on a poly cap and can swing forward, back, and go up. And the back skirt can move up as well. With the arms, you're going to get a nice double jointed elbow and it uses the old fashioned 3 1 in the trigger split. With the legs, you're going to get a beautiful double jointed knee with shifting armor and floating knee pads. And with the ankles, you're going to get some up and no downs, with the shin guards being able to move as well. I would say that the articulation is about above standard. Just like with any Gundam kit, this thing comes with accessories, and the Strike Noir is all about the accessories. Let's get started. Because of the fact that it uses the default 3-1 split, in order to fix that problem, they hand you no grade style hands where they can be used for different situations such as swords, guns, and just plain action poses. The first of these accessories are a pair of pistols. These are two pieces slapped together so there's little to no weight issues. They can be held with the 3-1 finger, but it's highly suggested that you use the gun holding hands for pure accuracy and little difficulty. They hold up pretty well despite missing sensor stickers and they can be mounted on the side skirts as seen here. No problem being able to hold them and storage is pretty easily fixed. The next of these accessories are you're going to get three buster rifles. Two from the duel that are exclusively molded for this kit and then you're going to get this one which is a left behind from the original strike coming with the clear piece as well. And this again can be held with the gun holding hand. Highly suggest that you use the gun holding hand because the 3-1 just isn't strong enough to hold together. And it looks pretty cool when you want to get down with some striking poses. The next part is the Noir Striker pack itself. This thing is a monster backpack and while it looks menacing and difficult to handle, it can have a beautiful wingspan and if you are able to balance it correctly, can stand up with everything posed together. It's really phenomenal. It's like if the Strike Noir took a page out of both Strike and Freedom. And a cool part of this here are again that the Striker pack also acts as guns as well. So you can do like a bit of a Strike Rouge Otori with the guns together. And also, they act as beam swords, which would make both the Force Impulse and the Sword Striker Gundam a little bit scared to be on the streets with this guy. And the final bit of accessories are, it comes with these two cables. You're going to connect them to either the bottom of the feet or the expressive hands. And it comes with this piece that you can hold on together to act like it's going to attack something with a chain or hook onto something. It's a really cool expressive... It's a nice bonus add-on that is very reminiscent of the Blitz and its claw. It gets the job done, even though it's a little impractical sometimes, but cool nonetheless to have. Now, with the Strike Noir, I have to say that it is a bit of a niche kit, but it's got a lot of good going for it. While it is held back a bit by the fact that it is using a now 15 year old frame, Bandai definitely tried to improve a lot of what was in the standard strike with the Strike Noir. The Strike Noir offers a lot of different posing hands that can help with articulation and posing as well. The proportions maybe aren't as anime accurate as its Strike Remaster counterpart, it definitely tries its best with its more dark and menacing look. I think what Bandai was really trying to do was to make and fix a lot of the mistakes. With the build, again, like I have to say, and let me reiterate this, you're going to be spending the majority of it trying to fix the nubs. That's probably the hardest part of this kit. But there's little 
inking or extra detail that you have to add out of the box. If you could just work with the nubs and have some patience, this thing will really pay off. This thing is very striking and I'm happy to have it as part of my collection, even though it has flaws. I would love in the future if Bandai could do a 2.0 of the Striking War, even if it's just coming from an OVA. Well, that's what has it about with the Striking War. I'm 101R Smith, I will see you later. Peace!